Hello and welcome to BQ Prime. You're joining us on this uh, special episode of Bank the Book, uh, where we're joined with Mr. Sh- uh, Sham Srinivasan of uh, Federal Bank. Uh, and of course, uh, Federal Bank has been this entity that has always been talked about as a provision of the bank. I'm just curious to understand, sir, as uh, the head of this bank and for having been the CEO for uh, nearly 12 years now, uh, what exactly do you aim for Federal Bank in the rest of your term, whether it's an extended term or not? I think go back in time, uh, our story has been we want to be the most admired bank. I've never said we want to be the biggest, most profitable. Those are uh, financial outcomes. We've been <clears throat> quite uh, adamant about being admired. And you know, being admired is earned. It's never yes. bought, right? Yes. So it's a lot of hard work. And we tell ourselves every day we exist to be admired mm-hmm. at all levels, you know, whether it's the governance side, whether it's financial outcomes employee well-being, employee feeling good, and most importantly, customers. So we've created measures, metrics that support this statement, right? So if you take our whole client experience, uh, from me downwards, everybody, we have a net promoter score and we are quite (coughs) fussed about it. So nobody gets a high performance rating if the NPS at his or his team level is below a certain grade. Mm. So the journey of the being is being marching to the tune of being most admired. So all that we do has to pass, will it pass the most admired bank test. Um, having set ourselves this lofty goal, it becomes very difficult to even meet our own internal standards, mm-hmm. right? And we continuously refresh that and tell ourselves, okay, we reach this way to get better. So if you take the last many years, uh, financially, we we probably the only few banks in the country, and I say with some pride that can claim a 15% CAGR over a 10 year period without any wrinkle. Even the best banks in India who do exceptionally well, mm-hmm. barring the top two, have had uh, peaks and troughs. If you look at federal story over a long period of time, be it growth, CAGR of growth, market share gain, credit quality, no known governance failure, all this speaks to the theme of wanting to be most admired, but our own aspirations and the market standards are ever changing. And therefore, when you get somewhere close to that aspirational as point, you keep pushing the knee, you know, the, the, the bar gets mm. shifted. So in short, being most admired is our journey. It's, it's, it's an obsession. Are we making progress? Yes. Uh, can we be better? Yes. But do we take heart from the fact that Uh, We haven't strayed away from that. We've been true to that spirit. Uh, Are there measures and metrics that support that statement that we can tell the world by evidencing facts? I think we are there. So that's what our story is. So when it comes to being the most admired bank now, what exactly is uh, the biggest challenge on the employee front, on the the customer front? To your mind, what comes in the way of that uh, goal? No, I don't think anything comes in the way of the goal, but the nature of such a goal is that it is uh, always pushing us to do more. Mm. So I claim myself and the team that I'm happily dissatisfied, right? Uh, and that's by choice, right? We're never unhappy or you know sort of disappointed, but we are always dissatisfied because good is never good enough. And in a very competitive space, uh, as it is today, and competition is not just banks, we've all seen that. That's no longer a slogan. It is customer is benchmarking you against many other experiences. He's not benchmarking you against the banking experience. Mm-hmm. So you could be one of the warmer, friendlier uh, bank, mm-hmm. but his, his or her experience is against uh, their experience they had with, say, in an Uber or in a, in a, in a Domino's pizza for all you care. So the, what comes in the way is an ever changing environment and a younger audience that is getting terribly more digitally friendly. So all their experiences are informed by their device experience. So as a bank which has brick and mortar has absorbed digital and you may be aware our mantra is digital at the fore, human at the core. Mm. And we've been again true to that and saying our most recent campaign, if you've seen the Rishta Apse campaign, was all about in a very digital world the relationship with, with you, not with your app. Mm. Right? While we have all the trappings of a very good, powerful digital capability, our app scores very well. I want us to amplify the goodness of federal bankers mm. 
and that promise has to be lived every day if you walk into my branch or if you call my call center or engage with me or any of our colleagues that experience should be well above the average i mean it has to be on par with what in his mind is superior mm. these are promises that are hard to express all the time correct right? so the question to you the answer to your question is what comes in the way nothing but our aspiration being tall we have to keep pushing ourselves continuously and that's just one client dimension regulations changing in almost on the go right mm. there's so many uh, environment changes that are happening uh, you may remember ifc took a position in federal bank about a year and a half ago and that was not by accident we had we had uh, been pass you know working on our esg principles mm. and when they saw our esg and our green practices i'm guessing it helped them make a decision in favor of their first and only e- green equity investment in india or in asia for that matter and up to the permissible level of 5% and that was again not an accident it again goes back to our most uh, admired if you want to be admired you have to be socially relevant you have to be committed to causes that are you know good for the environment so um in all this i think we are making progress uh you know some better some areas more work to do so it's nothing is coming in the way it's just ourselves doing better and sometimes we slip so that's what comes in the way so uh okay yeah. as far as uh, federal bank uh, and your approach towards growth future growth is concerned i read in an interview that you want to tap into the unsecured uh, segment quite a bit because that's a great growth opportunity is presenting itself now one thing on the unsecured is everybody keeps looking at it from a point of oh what if it explodes at some point in time you will reach a uh, point where you can't really control the the outcome uh is that something that concerns you overall from the system point of view not just for uh you know i'll tell you <clears throat> the one of the advantages of having done this job for a long many years mm-hmm. i cut my teeth as a banker in unsecured credit yeah. right i my one of my earliest or the first job was credit card in then the most uh, popular credit card bank so i did 10 odd years of that early years of mine across sales marketing products credit operations the whole works that gave me the full view of that business mm-hmm. the lesson i learned then and i think we still practice in our bank is unsecured is great but it has to be part of a portfolio right so in my time in our bank we started talking unsecured credit only in 2019 mm-hmm. that was 9 years after i joined our bank mm. so our focus was around ensuring secured ensuring credit standards ensuring independence of credit ensuring that the mix of business retail wholesale is all kind of established when we had that grip on the bank and our credit standards had become good our underwriting and collection capability were getting good we said we must foray into unsecured because the institutional mindset is prepared for that and we have absorption capability Uh, as we started out on the unsecured piece and we there also said we'll phase it we'll do existing to bank and then only we'll do new to bank as we got into the existing bank we said we will not get into paper based category we will do straight through mm. and it must be in such a way that oh, three clicks in the guy gets his card yeah. so even to this day 3 years into the launch we don't have a single application form for credit cards customer clicks takes the card first virtually then a physical card follows yeah. we would have scaled this up but during covid we put a hold on it because it was not the most conducive of times as covid is sort of abated hopefully it has we are back in the game mm-hmm. and now we have the confidence to scale this business both existing to bank and new to bank organically and using partnerships here again it falls in the box of retail wholesale within retail how much secured how much unsecured within wholesale how much secured how much secured so we have created our own risk boundaries of how much of our business can be of any one type to avoid any concentration risk so if you take our portfolio i am not saying this year you take 3 years out <coughs> unsecured would probably be 10% of our overall outstandings so on a if the book becomes say 3 lakh crores we are about 1.8 lakh crores we become 3 lakh crores over the next 3 years 3 3 and a half years and second be 30000 crores mm. even god forbid it runs at some point runs amok in a 4% loss or if such thing happens 
the book is well insulated on a 3 lakh crore book you have enough because our credit costs barring the best one or two banks in the country we are in the top 3 banks in credit costs i'm not talking of slippages i'm just talking about credit costs which yes. means well provisioned we have coverage ratios including written off is about 80 odd percent credit costs in long periods of time have been between 30 last quarter last year was the best at 30 basis points 30 35 basis points 40 basis points long period average is 50 60 basis points so we've created institutional mechanisms to guard against any kind of outlandish both behavior and outcomes this is the risk construct sure. will there be some glitches yes will there be uh, some you know unfortunate event somewhere yes but we've guarded through the metrics that we've set for so i'm not uh, overly perturbed by it nor will we allow for it to become a single largest business for that matter no one business should dominate the pitch that is our storyline we want to be uh, adamantly mm -hmm. focused on some kind of risk boundaries that's for you but uh, you know there's a lot of uh, participants in the system who seem to be very keen on doing this unsecured piece they like this business because it's easier shorter term higher uh, uh, margin uh, is it is the system according to you your view of over the years of seeing the system is the system ready for that a lot readier now than it ever was mm -hmm. the biggest thing which not you know it better is that the bureau and uh, digital footprint of people mm -hmm. is now all over the place mm -hmm. So it is very unlikely somebody can run away 10, 15, 20 lakhs of credit on their credit card yeah. or personal loans and evaporate or disappear from the system uh, unless it's a fraud. If it's right. patently a fraud, that's a different story. But that's one in me. Yeah. So the fraud aspect, if you keep aside, credit behavior uh, cannot be a runaway problem. Yeah. In the new score based underwriting, in the new digital footprint uh, establishments, in the bureau environment, with an account aggregator also scaling up. I think the India underwriting ecosystem has now matured to a level. You must be crazily blind to let this happen. Mm -hmm. Can it happen for one odd bank who have been uh, disregarding? Maybe yes, but I think the regulations and the ecosystem have become uh, sufficiently mature mm. and I don't believe it can happen um, uh, at scale. Okay. Will there be some issuer who um, went amok? Maybe yes, but I don't believe anybody has balance sheet of that scale for a little player to scale up. So if it's a big bank, I think not. So I want to touch upon this uh and these uh, various other, uh, you know, institutions or functionalities that have come in with the system, account aggregator. Uh, I want to talk about the fintech ecosystem, but before that, I want to touch on GI abilities because that is one question that has been going. Now, maybe after this 2000 rupee withdrawal, there's some hope that those liabilities will come back. But in general, in the system, can a system survive on on consistently low growth on the liability front, even though the liability is higher than assets even today? Yeah, see, I think uh, these are, uh, I, I think, point in time, I don't believe these are uh, long lasting issues, uh, long lasting problem. Yeah. General philosophy has to be fund before you lend, right? Every bank is aware of that. So are we. I'm sure all our leading banks are aware, a lot of leading players are aware. So funding is important, you can't do it. You must remember India's banking system also has a large amount sitting in government security. So there is some, uh, you know, yeah, there is, there is a significant part of our question, right? That's a reality. Yeah. That said, you don't want to dip into it, right? Yeah. You have to grow organically. Um, for well-established franchises who are growing, say, credit at 18, 20%, growing liabilities to match that is not such a challenge. Having said that, the nature of the liability, you know, you can, the term is price elastic. Uh, you or your father or your family member or whatever would be happy to place that term deposit in a bank do you know that brand first as much as your price fixated? Yeah. So there's a movement that happens in deposits. So that will continue to happen. That a price money is available. Savings account, there's a stickiness, and that's where I think the movement doesn't happen. Incremental deposit creation will happen, but that's a function of money supply. 
Now, we have to believe that the Indian economy in all measures are beginning to tick or is certainly performing better than many others and the wheels of the engine are running. Mm. So, I am of the view that whatever we saw through the last two periods, COVID saw a huge run up, post COVID you saw a kind of a dip. Yeah. I think it is reaching normal state, pricing is getting more moderated, uh, interest rates seem to be, I would like to believe tapering off. So, at this juncture, deposit growth. Uh, will be challenged. I'm not, uh, you know, poo-pooing it, but won't be as amplified as it is. Events like, uh, you know, the so-called two thousand rupees, uh, you know, closure will also help. Uh, in the near term, you know, one or two lakh crores can come in. Uh, if the credit extension is going on at this phase, it's already beginning to at an industry level is slightly slowing down to the early teens. Yeah. Right. That's a base effect. Yeah, so it could be a base effect, it could be seasonal, mm. right? Usually second half is better than first half, all those things. So the deposit creation will catch up. And you know, if you've been investing the money, it's betting, see, my spending is your your source of money. Your spending is somebody else's source of money. Yeah. If the spending is happening, consumption is happening, right? The form factor may have changed from cash to digital, but the money is in circulation. So, if M3, money, money in circulation keeps increasing, which I think it is, I don't believe it will become such a showstopper. Okay, fair enough. Uh, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to how the system is approaching in, um, uh, in the, uh, the current uh, liabilities, uh, there, there's obviously this news of, of uh, high value uh, uh, multi deposits coming back. For many years, I didn't hear anybody raising my deposits. Now, suddenly, this season, a lot of banks are coming back with that. So, does cost play uh, sort of playing on that cost factor? Uh, that advantage goes to the larger guys. I'm, I'm not sure how uh, the medium or the smaller banks uh, adapt to in that. I just mentioned, right? Uh, term is price elastic. Yes. <clears throat> so, if the top three, four, five banks in the country are pricing one year term at X. Mm. That's the new price standard. I wonder if anybody will be off by many basis points. So then your captive client base will continue to bank with you. I mean, I haven't seen if you take Q4, which is for us and few other banks, Q4 sequentially my deposits Q on Q grew six odd percent. Term grew substantially because we priced it to meet market standards. So there is a price move, price enabled movement of money that happens. So I don't believe big or small will be. If this game is distribution and reach, right? Uh, uh, big by nature of the side. Yeah, here is the catch, right? Yeah. Here is the interesting part. Erstwhile, big is equal to number of physical branches. If I tell you, and this is facts that I'm not creating a story. Mm. Today we do roughly 15 to 16,000 new customers into the bank every day, mm. right? I would think the bigger banks, whoever they be, would probably be doing similar numbers, plus maybe minus. I do through my branch network about 4,000, but I do through my fintech partnerships and others, maybe another 8, 10,000. Okay. So what we lack in physical infrastructure, we create through digital infrastructure. and. So each business model of every bank could vary. So I don't believe it's just physical presence that makes somebody big, it's reach that makes somebody big. We've invested in the reach, somebody else may be investing in some other form. Uh, so all things being equal, if reach, I'm in the face of Mr. Vishwanath and say, sir, can you, can you place the deposit with me and I don't have a scar on my name, you wouldn't think twice about placing it because I am promising you the services, the bank has credibility, the Indian banking system has credibility that no bank has gone under, the government stands guarantee, the regulators stand guarantee. So I think the uh, reach is the crucial aspect and today most banks, whether the public, private have figured out themselves, business correspondence, digital. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a dash or a race for reaching Mr. Customer. Mm. And remember, there's a large cohort of customers who came through the Jandan program, through the various digital initiatives, are all graduating and maturing. So, underlying construct of all this is, I think, the growth of the economy, which I'm hoping and all of us are hoping and praying, is consistently six, seven, eight percent. 
then the wheels are rotating, then all the enablers for them to develop cash flows exist. So uh, it's like <coughs> you created the architecture, uh, it has to rain, right? the ponds have to become full. And the rain in this instance is about economy growing. Yeah. And I would think that's why all of us are optimistic. And most indicators suggest that it's certainly better than it ever was. Uh, it ever was in the last five, six years. So I think this and the asymmetry that's happening between us and most of the world, other parts of the world, make India that much more attractive. Mm. So I would think yes. Uh, it, speaking about these uh, startups and the, the fintech ecosystem that you've uh, very successfully attacked, uh, some of the other uh, smaller small finance banks who have uh, tried a similar approach. Uh, see inclusion of accounts, but those accounts don't really add up in terms of outstanding deposits. What has been your experience? Do customers that have come... To no, no, I have to be honest. It takes time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, even I told you we had that many customers. All of them don't add balances because this is a very new-to-bank profile of customers. Mm -hmm. They are young, uh, new-to-salary, new-to-banking, new-to-category mm -hmm. kind of customers. Um, but you have to give them three, five years for it to mature. Now, I'm just going back. Uh, one of the biggest strengths of Federal Bank for long, many years has been a non-resident catchment, right? Yes. We are 20 odd percent of India's remittances come through Federal Bank. 25 years back, it looked like a not a very clever idea mm. to have non-resident accounts opened at scale. Because they were not building balances. Most of them were masons, plumbers who went and they just sent home some bare minimum after what they could use for their consumption for the home chulas to burn here. But over a long period of time, that has grown, matured. They went as something, but they became many of them became even successful businessmen. So that category grew. Of course, there'll be a churn. If you book 100,000, 80,000 will be the tail, 20,000 will be the winners. Same thing is happening today. Just that how Jandan happened, you know, when uh, Jandan was launched at scale, today you can see the balances lying in Jandan accounts across big banks right. is substantial. So I think this whole, for us last year, we booked 25 lakh customers mm -hmm. through our FinTech partnerships, mm -hmm. 20, 25 lakhs. Do they all build balances at time zero? No. Mm -hmm. Will they build over a three, five year period? At least 40% of them will yeah. build because they are salaried employed starting their career with somebody. They will get their first salary, second salary, bonus, options, they'll buy a car, they will start a business, they'll rotate the money. So it'll build balances. So I'm of the view, this is a long burn. Uh, we have to carry that for a long period of time. So you have to keep balancing credit and deposit requirements. So short answer, I mean, long answer to your question. Will this be a straight shot winner? No. You need to curate them, nurture them over long periods of time. Our approach has been from our past learnings to do that. So could theoretically a bank develop this in-house or is partnership the only way to achieve this? No, you get reach, right? Just like a BC model. These are all the, you know, why do we create uh, distribution partners and uh, insurance companies can do everything to themselves. Why do they talk to a bank? It's just the multiplier effect of deeper reach. Um, whatever we do, the last mile will always be more work to do. That's the beauty of India, right? The last mile is where the story is. Yeah. So I think, and with digital capabilities becoming so much better, it's wise to use these partners. It's been 15 years of this, the national conclusion talk, I mean, I'm sure it's been much longer. longer. But the last 15 years, there, there's been some concerted effort, government getting more, the RBI actively pushing banks to do things. Can we achieve that last mile? Better than ever was, right? This is a journey. I mean, India is uh, the beauty of our country is it's so widespread, so deep in the villages that things happen, and you can't believe you have cracked it all. But mm. I do think, uh, in I sound like an old man, but I've done thirty-five years of work, right? So I've seen this, uh, seen this happen, and uh, my summer project in nineteen eighty-six was. India is in a state of flux. Mm. If I were a student here in 2023 and write a summer project, my first line will be, India is in a state of flux. And chances are 10 years later also. But that's nature. I mean, that's the beauty of an uh, evolving system. But sure. I think it is it is way better. Way better. Uh, 
so another point uh, that has been already publicized quite a bit, but there's a, there's a capital raise plan at the federal bank, 4,000 odd crore that you can raise. You're also looking at an inorganic acquisition at some point, at least that's been reported. Uh, I, I'm curious to understand this. Uh, a lot of banks have tried this microfinance route. Right? Very recently, another private sector bank also acquired a microfinance company. Past experience has not been that great when you acquire, once you acquire, because banks don't understand the microfinance the business necessarily. And the people who are doing that business don't necessarily fit into the bank's uh, sort of rules and regulations. Uh, how do you how do you see this? No, I think, see, I'll tell you. We are, as a bank, quite excited by that space. I've been out eight years on record talking about wanting to uh, <laughs> buy. As you can see, we haven't made success. Yeah. And only because we are probably over conservative and found not found the right fix or right mix. But below the radar, we have created our own microfinance growth capabilities. And I have to proudly say that's doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. You know, whether even we started in 19, we through COVID built the technology. Now we are running quite well. Organically, we have booked already 1000 plus crores of microfinance, oh. right? So we even now when we are hunting or saying we're interested, it has to make a fit which is accretive and not just uh, you know, just for the sake of it. So if nothing comes up, we are not going to do it. But it's a business that is very exciting. And uh, our microfinance team and our commercial vehicle teams are almost two businesses within the bank, which are fully self-sufficient. So it's like a commercial vehicle business. Uh, if they can compete with the Sriram or uh, microfinance can compete with whoever or even better. Technology wise, the disciplines wise. Yeah. So if we get an opportunity to acquire somebody, uh, it would be those two entities, our own microfinance and that entity can combine together. Structure wise, I think what Indusin has done is a good structure, at least it appears. So have a mini yeah, so that seems to be working quite well as I've studied and read. We may adopt some structure, but I am not suggesting we are going to wait for that to happen. If it happens, great. Because usually if it's very good, it's priced high, you mm. would be trying twice. If it's price too low then you don't yeah, think it's right. yeah so i think this is and this is a very seasonal uh you know it keeps Absolutely. going through its troughs and highs so we have to be thoughtful about it we are very interested but we haven't found anything but we are deeply putting in mechanisms in the bank to do it ourselves okay um when you look at the way uh india is structured at this point in time in terms of growth and opportunities like for a bank um there is a global slowdown we're talking about, but having said that, the index is actually still very strong. There's no real signs of that slowing down anytime soon. Um, to your mind as a banker, what is it that excites you in market at this point? Some of those points I spoke about. I think yeah. the uh, first, the fact that India is growing better than other geographies yes. uh, is heartening. Uh, that it is attracting eyeballs from across the world and therefore it is getting in um, not only public glare but it's also bringing in capabilities is very mm -hmm. exciting domestically economy is still in a good place which means credit demand exists which means you you, you are able to reach more people and grow uh, many of the so-called historical dividend because of age in favor are i think playing through the ecosystem of onboarding a client is probably the best in the world. I mean, you know, you could argue that not many geographies have all these things playing out together yeah. at the same time. So, uh, and different banks are in different stages of passion and growth. Some may be in, you know, I'm good to just middle it out. Some may be, you know, we are in a, uh, you know, on a growth path and we have capital and institutional capabilities. I think we are in that space. I mean, I think uh, the, the fact that you're talking of us uh, looking to raise capital is not to capitalize the problem. We are capitalizing the bank to grow, mm. right? And we've been very thoughtful about our capital raise. In the last 12 years, I've raised capital only once. Yeah. We continuously put in retained earnings to, you know, sort of grow the bank. We haven't been indiscreet about capital raise. But now with a lot of uh, uh, requirements, both aspirations for growth and I think regulatory expectations are you must remain well capitalized, create capital buffers. We're in a good place to do that. Uh, so I think the India opportunity, our own capabilities, and maybe the timing is right for us to do some stepping up. Those are what's exciting. 
I want to start wrapping up this conversation, and then one of the one of the last few questions that I want to ask you is is uh, on the portion fact. Okay, now your Federal Bank has been a ultra conservative sort of lender, very focused on the quality of the growth, uh, even if it was sacrificing some of the high uh, deeds growth that uh, some of your other part, uh, you know peers may see. Um, what is the point of portion in this environment where you are where you still have a uh, you know gas? Yes. Happily dissatisfied. I have to tell myself it's not a mantra; it's a practice. Yeah. Right. Uh, when credit looks good mm. and credit costs are low, worry more. Yeah. And you don't know whether something is bubbling up. That's one. Second is a certain section of our growth is dependent on partners. Yeah. Uh, so how do you make sure your partners are singing the same tune and not going off course? Um, the third, which is universal and all the time, is we are a very homegrown talent bank, right? Uh, we haven't superimposed many people who come in at various levels to build the bank. Ours is grounds up, we've built the bank. Of course, we've got very senior talent which has come in over the last five, six years. That marriage has to be intact and the homegrown capabilities are now getting uh, eyes around them. Because we have become three years great place to work, yeah. right? And we don't intend giving that space up. Yeah. So if you have to do all these things, the worry is uh, the senior management have to be uh, sort of obsessed about keeping this machine running this way, and that means uh, you have to be Dhoni plus, and that's what we want to be. Dhoni plus. Okay. Last, I, I want to I want bring in the, you know this conversation started with min, the mention of middle of the back, which I did, of course. And you said you want to be the most admired. Don't care much about uh, growing. Uh, I think that is. Why should a customer come to go middle mid sides back? I tell you what. The, the reason for this question is a big bank is offering reach, uh, you know, a availability wherever wherever you are to short fire and the smaller bank is offering you localized ultra customized. What is a middle bank uh, mid side bank offering? Look at that. Great question, and thank you for asking this. Um, there are two parts. One is a customer, and one is a non-customer. I am willing to wager a bet. If you are a customer of our bank, uh, you would hate to leave us, uh-huh. right? Uh, because we, I said, we are trying to be warm. We are trying to be. Our product capabilities are no less. We are small enough for you to reach even the MD, right? Uh, we are not uh, layered so much that you can't connect to the bank. Mm. Uh, we are still human. We are one bank that you call the call center. It's not an IV. We are talking to a human being. Talking to person. Yeah. Right. So there's a warmth and the Rista Ab says if Ab say nahi line, we live, live. So customers, I think we have a greater grip and we obsess about NPS. Non-customers is the challenge, right? There are, we are still one and a half percent share of India. Yeah. 98.5% we don't bank. Mm. But even if I double one and a half to three, I'm in a great place. I'll build another federal bank. So that's what keeps us excited. So why should somebody bank with us? Uh, if you ask the people who bank with us, they're happy. Mm-hmm. We're doing 15, 16,000 new customers a day. That's not a small number. Yeah. That's three lakh customers a month, 35 lakh customers a year. We build, we have 1.3 crore customers. We can build one federal bank every three years. So if I grow at that rate, I will be more and more people will become customer. If he's a customer, he'll like being with us. We can't lose that magic. We have to keep that magic intact mm-hmm. in the bank. And that's what I would say. All right. Thank, Thank you so much, Mr. Srivast, for joining us on this conversation. Mm-hmm.